Hello and welcome to the fourth tutorial video for Bus Simulator 16. Today I want to show you how you can integrate your own buses into the game. Therefore I already prepared a modification. Here you can see the 3D model as Collada file. This format is used by Bus Simulator for new bus models. Furthermore, I already started Blender and imported the 3D model into the workspace. First let me customize the scene by moving the outliner. Thus we get insight into the structure of the model. I'm now going to hide all colliders for getting a better view of our 3D model. So this is the bus model which we will integrate in the game now. Oh, I should also hide the exterior glasses. Now let's take a look inside the bus. In the lower part of the outliner, you will find the so-called locators. A locator defines a point where we can interact with the bus or where parts of the bus will be spawned. Those parts, for example a tablet, will be located and scaled corresponding to the locator object. One is the locator vehicle enter. The associated collider defines the area where I can click on the seat to enter or leave the cockpit. All locators or colliders with the suffix interactable can be clicked with a mouse. Otherwise, they can only be controlled by a keyboard. After hiding the collision box, we'll now see a locator called Target Vehicle Enter. This defines the point where the driver figure will be placed after leaving the cockpit. Now let's take a closer look at the doors. I already selected the locator for the front doors. As you can see this is for the push buttons for opening and closing the doors. There can be multiple variations of a locator. For example there are multiple variations of control lights. In this case there is also another locator for the front doors. Outside of our model, left to the doors, there is another locator for a door opener, for example. It is very important to define a passenger move tree means waypoints inside a bus for all passengers to find their seats. I've selected a locator for the passenger move tree for the rear door. This locator has lots of child nodes defining positions where people can stand or seat. Leaf nodes are supposed to be ideal travel positions, so for example those four seats will be preferred over the standing positions. There is one thing I have to mention, so first I select the locator. Please be aware of the rotation of the locator to guarantee a right seating position. A few words to the wheels. Up to four active motorized wheels are supported for now. Each wheel needs a child called wheel position to extract the position of the physical wheel. Also each wheel should be positioned in such a manner to describe the most compressed suspension spring. That means a minimal suspension distance. Also, each wheel should be located at the center of the visual wheel, but at its most outside position on the x-axis. There are also locators for the indicator lights, though so there are lights in the back and the front of the bus model, and also on the side. In order to have a flashing effect, all locators must have a suffix light. If this is the case, an actual light source is used at that position as well. For a working in-game bus customization, the game needs to know about the main bus mesh. To locate it, the corresponding part needs to contain the substring exterior main in its name. In the definition file, a lot of this will seem familiar to you. 
However, there is a difference. All new buses are based on an existing bus model regarding the purchase price or the technical data. This is necessary to keep the balance. The number for the property base corresponds to the index of the original bus in the bus shop in game. As you may know, the process of developing a new bus model is very complex and time consuming, so I recommend you to take a look at the documentation and the sample files inside the modification. Nevertheless, I hope you will enjoy creating new bus models and have a lot of fun with Bus Simulator 16.